like Yar mateys and uh, yar 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 mateys and the uh, it's a pirates episode. Arr, 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 it's a talk arr, 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 it's a, we are a couple of pirates arr, and parlay. So you may I'm have noticed good. you're pretty good. This is when will it end? Hi, and we're, we're starting a new series. It's not Die Hard. We're watching really the Die Hard of the ocean. You keep saying that every time we don't do it. Well, I mean, we're not. So I think you said literally said that about Jaws. I think well, the it's exact true. Same we 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 watch the Die Hard of the Ocean. So wait, how yeah. can how can how can this is the Die Jaws... Hard two of the ocean? <laughs> oh, I get it. Right, see, Die Hard two, Die Harder of the ocean. Exactly. Yeah. Boat time. Sorry, ship. <laughs> Who am I, Captain Jack Sparrow? You gotta talk more like a pirate. Arr, yar. Okay, I'm gonna we're gonna kick it off tonight with a review I found on IMDb. That's how we're starting from November. Wait, can we please from November 2005? Or, I feel like we're we're okay, rushing. Ex- it. Explain the show. All right. I'm Charles. I'm Josh. This is Josh and Charles Productions. You're welcome. Bringing uh, When Will It End? Mm, hi. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. Was, uh, for first time listeners and second time listeners. Hell, hey, third time listeners, you're welcome too. Fourth, I hope. Go fuck yourself. Yeah, by the fourth, you don't need this anymore. But this is for the first, second, and third time listeners. Fifth, honestly, you came back. I'm proud of you. That's true. That shows gumption. Gumption? Gumption. We're in a garret of gumption. This is the Gumption Garrett, of course. I've never studio. heard of this word Garrett, and I like it. You keep saying an artist it. Garrett. You've never heard of this? No. It's a French thing. You're I'm French. French. You're fucking I'm a disgusting French artist. French blood. Yeah. Fuck. Okay. Go ahead. Okay. Anyway, so we watch a movie series from start to finish. From we're... shark to finish. Oh, we're not doing Jaws anymore. I said start, but I like shark. We should have used shark that. Shark to this. finish. Fuck. What? Okay. Go back and read. I'll read re-edit re-edit all of them. All of our interest to use the phrase shark to finish. <laughs> okay. Um, and we are starting with a new one. Uh, a little old film that I like to call Pirates of the Caribbean. That is the name you've thought for it. Well, okay. you interrupted me. Okay, uh, go ahead. Pirates of the Caribbean, Curse of the Black Pearl. Right, and as we noticed quickly, this entire series, I think, has subtitles, which yes. is kind of a change in pace. We're going to be talking about that. Well, I like guess Maze Runner, that was all over the place, title-wise. But I would like to talk about that. But first, your review. Okay. Um, this is a 10-star review on IMDb. This was penned That's the on, most, right? No, it's the most. November 27th, 2005. The title... Debt for Emperor? Debt for Emperor? Debt for Emperor? Oh, Depp. I was... You know, Johnny Depp, the yeah, yeah, yeah. wife-abusing alcoholic nightmare man who's so in the grips of addiction and delusion that his life seems like a waking nightmare? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I am nearly 50 years old. A sober, grown man. This is great. With children. <laughs> children with whom I have now sat through hundreds of movies, many of which I have enjoyed, and yet I am not completely hardened in my sophistication. Ooh, that's good to know. Nathaniel Hawthorne wrote this, I think. (laughs) The opening music to The Lion King brought tears to my eyes when my little loved ones were but wee tots. But still, these are, after all, just children's movies. True. In another life, I would never have seen them. And really, one can't take such movies too seriously. Can one? (laughs) Is this real? And so this summer, after the ritual badgering, I dutifully trudge into yet another Disney quote-unquote adventure movie. (laughs) Named after that tired old ride in Anaheim, Anaheim member. Named after that tired old ride in Anaheim I first went on in 1965. I mean, really, how much can you expect? And then, it happened. The swirling intoxication, the stunned feeling. What? Who? How? Was this a movie? Or a religious experience? Perhaps more like an addictive experience. I cannot remember ever willingly paying to see any movie not starring a relative of mine more than twice. And I can count these movies on one hand. I have now seen Pirates four times. The only thing keeping me from the gun... Oh, sorry, no. The only thing keeping me from seeing it again is the sense that this whole thing is just getting out of hand. I cannot get enough of it. It's like walking into a painting that you never want to come out of. My children ask... <laughs> My ch- <laughs> I can't wait to hear what these children are asking for. My children ask with a note of, with a note of concern in their voices, Dad, you really like Pirates of the Caribbean a lot, don't you? And that Depp fellow, my God. I never had any idea who he was in 2005. <laughs> 
But his name sounded like something created for a pubescent cover boy for magazines published to hook 13-year-old girls on makeup and bad music. Wasn't Tep the name of some hair goo product back in the 1960s? I am a straight male. I have several good friends who are gay. <laughs> but I've never fantasized. But I've never fantasized about any gender but the female. <laughs> <laughs> but now I understand how women can experience swooning crushes on male film stars. He is simply extraordinary. So sly, so seductive, so canny. I read, I read an interview in which Depp said he went through a slight depression when he had to stop playing Captain Jack Sparrow. I can see why. His inventiveness and sheer pleasure in inhabiting the character come through in every frame. How can I admit to my children that I now troll through fan websites about a former teen heartthrob? Wow. I don't often watch the Academy Awards, and I certainly have never had an emotional investment in who wins. Except for this year. Go, Jack. Go, Jack. There's only eight more paragraphs. <laughs> Wait, this was written in 2005? Yes, I'm a little confused. About so it came written. out in 2003. He either saw in 2003 and sat on this, it's, which just seems like a really <laughs> emotional thing he went through seeing this movie. Okay, okay. Wait, there's more. There's a, yeah. I, I thought you were kidding. No, no, there's, we're, we're getting, we're almost done. All right. That's I think we're like halfway through. <laughs> and <laughs> Wait, who wrote it? We're getting there. Do we get a name? Okay. Yeah. And in a time when many big budget movies are little more than a hodgepodge of loosely connected monkey shots, this movie puts all the pieces together with a sense of fun and lightheartedness in special effects that are simply dazzling. I find myself laughing with dizzy appreciation when Barbosa barks out, you'd best be believing in ghost stories, Miss Turner. You're in one. Mm, I like that part too. And the grinning skeletons come to view with Bedelt's pounding score, keeping time to the beat of the mad maniacal deck swabbing. And then there's the scene of the pirate ghouls slithering up from the darkened seas and the mooring cables of the Dauntless, like infernal cats stalking their prey. And now, to the music. I can hear the effete aesthetes dismissing this score, as Mr. Zimmerman anticipates with his winking, overproduced by credit on the cover liner. Bombastic. Overdone. Absurdly stupendous. Well, perhaps it is for those who spend their lives evaluating such things. To me, it is absolutely transporting. I first listened to it while doing a workout on a rowing machine and found that I, tri <laughs> that I tripled my usual distance. My erections, firm, long. Okay, that was, uh, that was an, an editor's note. I don't, okay, he I was gonna, about, I was he does not talk about it. was like, this is, is, okay, this is real. It was like mainlining some hazardous tachycardic amphetamine <laughs> Laser beams. Okay. Once again, the children were wondering, what's up with Daddy? Is he okay? <laughs> Perhaps I am just losing my grip having an adolescent movie to get me this way. But when those final credits roll, Captain Jack narrows his eyes and says, Now bring me that horizon. Drink me up, hearties. Ho, ho. And the music swells. It is difficult to put into words the effect it has. At this point, my children have to yank me forcibly from the theater lest I persist in watching the credits to the bitter end and bid goodbye to the little monkey once more, wiping tears of exultation from my eyes. This is not just another entry in the summer blockbuster sweepstakes. It is an exquisite work of fantasy and inventiveness, a true classic on the order of The Wizard of Oz. I do hope Depp's performance garners not just awards, but a place in the pantheon, something we old fogies and ungently fogging children decades hence will show to our children and grandchildren like a revealed treasure. I cannot recall any moving having such an effect on me. And now I will return to that place beneath the seas where my cousin lies in the sunken city of Ryleth, and I will free Cthulhu, and again, he will walk across the... Okay, now, um, that is a real review on IMDb. It's That's my... a real review. Yes, it's my favorite thing I've ever read. Uh, it, really my favorite thing. That is the, the Cardinal review. By? Uh, I just lost it. How'd you fucking lose it? I, I, what the I, fuck, man? Like a depth ramper. Okay, it's by EAK-1. EAK-1. Yeah, and let's see here. He Can has, you see what else he's reviewed? I'm looking I'm sorry, right this now. is a really weird way to say it. For first time listeners. It's, just, it's his only review. He was driven to do this <laughs> the singular time That's he did this. both... I love that, and I also sort of hate it because I would love to... <laughs> 
to hear more from you. If you are EAK-1... Please write in. Please let us know. Legitimately, it seems like you rediscovered many things in your life through watching this movie. Yeah. Which, unless we're, you know... I enjoyed the movie. (laughs) (laughs) My heretofore fictional children, I don't think, would have been alarmed by reaction to this Gore Verbinski classic. All right. You got to do a little voice thing because you're still talking like this guy. Daddy? I I liked it while you you were Are you okay, Daddy? 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 You Stop watching you remind, The Dead Man. You reminded me of uh, the uncle from With Nil and I. Oh, that's true. Oh, yeah. Because <laughs> I tried to sexually assault you? No. He does. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's not why, though. Okay. No. Oh, I'm just saying. I'm just worried. I was worried it ever stepped a boundary. No, 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 no. You're just okay. like, the, the sky is beginning to bruise. <laughs> that's a good line. Um, I, I have to say... What else can we say? I don't know. That review really is the most rapturous evaluation of yeah, anything you, I've ever heard. If if there's a way to podcast, which I believe there is. Indeed. This, while I enjoyed your enthusiasm, it really points to what little we have to offer. <laughs> so perhaps ending with that or no, posting I think, it on our social media channels. I think we kick it open with EAK kick it dash open. eyes. One. One, excuse me, rapturous embrace of this film. Is it a dash or a hyphen? I think it's a dash. We can look into this later. We'll get the interns to review it. Two right now, it's right there. Okay, okay. Screen. Well, and I changed yeah. the screen to trivia. Let's okay. go back to, it's EAK. Hyphen. Hyphen. You hyphen. think it's a hyphen? Yeah, it's right. definitely a hyphen. So he joined in September 2003. So he would have. So do you think he tried for two years to post this review and couldn't quite figure out how? Like, what do you think happened here? Once again, the children were wondering, <laughs> what's up with daddy? What's up Is with daddy? Is he okay? Perhaps I am just losing my grip. Well, I do think this, this, I am glad you found this because this points to what this movie was doing. The cultural impact of this film, and again, we're, I'm almost 30, you're... Don't even mention it. Sure. Who gives a shit? Who gives a shit? The seismic impact of this film, like some of the things we've been watching recently, you come across lines where like, oh, that just became part of culture. Right. Like, I am disinclined to acquiesce to your request. I okay, people, what the fuck? It people said that? I yes. understand what it means. I, I'm the one who taught you the difference between a hyphen and a dash. I understand word. God, give me patience. There is no God. Daddy. Oh, yeah. There's just <clears throat> daddy. Daddy, yes. There is just daddy. I like the idea of EAK dash hyphen one just like sitting in his basement watching oh this God. over and over again. And do you think he knew he was about to enter into uh, like a six movie series or whatever? Yeah. Wow. I think that's, I mean, the reason why I like to call it Pirates of the Caribbean, The Curse of the Black Pearl is because to me that's comforting in that I know that when they made this movie, they were going to make a more movies. And a more and a more and a more. Yeah. So let's, uh, I, I'm curious about one thing. Hold on, I'll say one other thing. Yes, go. Hello, Puppet. Hello, Puppet. But I feel like that's just the thing pirates say. So that's, that's sort of a hard line. Is this like a pirates thing or a pirates thing? Did you get? I know. I, I hear what you're yeah. saying. You're saying is it a pirates thing or right. a pirates thing? Exactly. I think the whole point is like, didn't we all learn slang from pirates in this movie? Yeah. Just chill the fuck out, everybody. Fucking, you know, rules is dumb. Rules is dumb. Rules is dumb. Okay, no, uh, you were about to pose a hypothesis. So please, I grew up a pirate. No, 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 no. no. I I was actually a pirate. For, for Halloween once. Wow, good story. Oh, it's going to continue. You were the one kid who did it? So when I was a kid, did you dress up for Halloween? Yeah, I did. I got made fun of a lot because I played like, my parents like made me dress up as nice things. I mean, that sounds like a very mockable thing. Like, right. Like what, like a bunny? No, 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 no. Just like pirate, hobo, oh, like Peter the classics. Pan. Yeah, yeah. Like, I was never, like, blood on my face. I was never, like, a scary person. Right. And I used to get made fun of for being, like, Peter Pan for Halloween. Like, it's a white bread hobby showing up. Were you, were you like, a scary Halloweener? Or were you, like, a fun, like a nice? A pe- what what was it, your rating? It's skewed towards nice. My parents are not, like, into yeah. horror or, or scary things. I've I met think. them. I don't like dressing up anymore. I'll say that. I'm not in the yeah. kind of costumes. Though I did, after uh, watching... Jaws the Revenge for last week's episode, I really did want to dress up as her. Her outfit was great. That all well, white. Well, that just looked practical and Shoulder pad. Like, yeah. that's a great look, great costume. But yeah, I, get, I think for me... You're I talking, s- of course, Ellen Brody, played by the great... Yeah. Come yeah. on. Jerry? Lorraine? Jerry. Gary. Great, great, great. Um, 
I love costume ideas. I will never c- pull them off. Uh huh. I just don't have the time or money or investment. You know. Well, let me pose something to you. Okay. Yeah. And in this movie, we see a lot of people forced into playing roles. That's true. Because okay? they are actors. Are, no, 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 no. The characters oh, in the film. Right. Are we not all impressed by society into presenting a character okay. of sorts to the people around us? I think EAK hyphen one. He's is, inside me now. He's inside. <laughs> and this is the curse. I shall return to the Blu ray player and watch Pirates of the Caribbean, The Curse of the Black Pearl again and again and again and see my depth. My depth. Oh, go, Jack. Daddy, are you okay? Shut up. Shut up. Anyway, what I'm it. saying is, is that yeah. we're all, you know, forced to play roles by society every mm. day. Okay, me, brilliant journalist. You, sure, ale wench. I don't know. Yeah, you have to sop up the vomit and bring out more beer nuts for people, or whatever fucking shack you work in. Yeah, I don't have beer nuts, and I've luckily never been the one to clean up vomit. You probably scrub piss soaked floorboards all day just for a half shilling. A shilling. I do ask for the full shilling, and they say. No, piss boy. No, piss boy. Yeah. yeah, but I mean, I like it. It's true. You I love like the being piss. piss boy. It's good. <laughs> yeah, when I mean, yeah. you get paid in piss too. You were telling me. I'm it's envious. True. Yeah, they they force you to drink it. People wonder what it's like to work in public radio. They make you drink piss. Yeah, you can ask anyone who works in public radio this. They'll tell you. They, I mean, if they don't tell you, it's because they don't want anyone else in on the secret. Because they're playing a role society forced them to play. So why in Halloween is it we're leaving to dress up all over again to mm. put another layer of veneer over the veneer we already wear? So do you think that that's why they everyone was having so much fun because Johnny Depp, actor, legendary actor, Natalie Portman, actor, actor. No, no, you got it wrong. You got it wrong. You mistook white women. Uh, Kira Orlando Bloom Knightley. actor. Well, I'm gonna do this bit the whole. Josh, you, I'm gonna do this whole the whole time. I'm gonna just call, call her Natalie Portman. Well, I think it's disrespectful to the work that Kira Knightley's done in Men Which, Like what? Beckham, in Love Actually. What happened to her? Um, I think she just kind of well, she's in Pride and Prejudice and things. I think she That's just kind of doesn't really. She never, I think, got to that. But these movies are so stratospheric. I feel like she did yeah. her time. Her name is all over this massive oh, yeah, franchise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I mean, like she got her shot. I feel like Orlando Bloom did it perfect. I mean, he managed to get his name into two insane franchises. Right, so like, and yeah. I think that's it, right? He, Why he would did he did a couple of again? things ever again, but like it's just for fun. Well, it he's like... in the truly despicable Elizabeth Town, the terrible Cameron Crowe movie, where he is legitimately one of the worst actors I've seen in my entire right. life. He's that a film. bad actor. That's we we're talking about this. This is the era of bad acting, I think. It's funny to rewatch this because, like, well, Jack Sparrow and Depp are definitely you get why they're popular. It's not. It hasn't aged that well. I don't think no. it's, it's timeless. I think Depp, for all of his bad, being a bad person, he is a good actor in this. I'd say he's probably the best performance. I actually really like Keira Knightley and Jeffrey Rush in this. I think you Jeffrey like Rush Keira is Knightley. excellent. I feel like Keira Knightley is doing a stage thing. But she plays period pieces a lot. I think That's she plays I mean. it a little big. I, I like her. I think okay. it's cool. Where she's like, I'm obsessed with pirates. I'm going to be a good pirate because I'm like a nerd about piracy. And like, she plays yeah, it really yeah, well. Yeah. She's brave and cool. I'm good all character. Yeah, yeah, she was she was a good character. I don't think she was well acted. I mean, Jeffrey Rush just pushed things to... Uh, he's the, I think he's the best part of the He's movie. great. And they like, but he was given the juiciest role. And just like Depp. Like, they are both being like, you be harsh pirate, you be drunk pirate. And mm-hmm. it's like, that's all they had to do where Karen Knightley really was like, she's, I've never uh, okay. been all that the, the appreciative s- of her style of acting. The straight leads and the straight characters in this movie are tasked with incredible mildness. Yeah. Much like Orlando Bloom. He's like, that's what I'm saying. I'm saying those two. Yeah, exactly. They're just like, they're very stern and earnest and like, this is what I believe in and this is what I will do. And I love you. Right, it's, it's, they're you. given like the, the the real look. It's a Disney movie, okay? They want sure. some real canvases in the leads to really let people project onto it. They're just like virtuous people who like bend the rules for the greater good and are you know justice minded things of that nature. So you know, it's it's kind of thankless in that regard. Yeah, it's like Viggo and Lord of the Rings. You're playing like the handsome, cool guy, and it's I don't think it really requires that much bravado. Right, but I feel like that's what I mean. Like this is the era of bad acting, and like this is the sort of shit that was coming out around then for like big stuff that a lot of people were seeing it feels like it was this style you know it was a bad actor who had to take down Saddam who? Hussein it was 2003 yeah had- we had to he was a bad actor axis of evil a bad actor yeah, like on the global stage, like a bad actor. Yeah, yeah, okay. Oh, the global stage. Right, we had to take him down. Because he's boards. not all the world is staged, we but trod the boards upon it and the thing we do. Sure, are you okay, Typhon 1? 
I must watch my debt. Go Jack. <laughs> go Jack. Imagine Jack Nicholson's like, go Jack. Yeah. Yeah. Um, go Jack. What I was going to say is all these people are actors, but yes. they also get to play other versions of themselves during the movie, much in the same way that we dress up for Halloween. Mm. So they got to do both whilst getting paid a hefty sum. It is, it's quite the flight of fancy to consider the sheer level of layers, shall we say. Sure. Yeah, like an onion. Like an onion. Ogres like onions. Ogres, donkeys like parfait. ogres. Like onions. onions. Parfait. I now do a lot of Shrek impersonations. People come up to me at work and be like, "Charles, can you do a Shrek impression today?" And I go, "Of course." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Kick me in the balls. Please. Somebody. <laughs> I like that part. Doolop. 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 Doolop, though. Yeah, the town of Doolop. Yeah. We never figured that out. We will figure that out one day. One of these days, yeah. It's, it's still confusing. Years later. Okay, yes. Um. So no, I, I hear what you're saying. Like, there's... Okay, so you're, you're talking about a movie that is kind of insanely complicated, but, like, it's a fun... Look, on a baseline level, for an, a foundation-setting first movie in a series... It sort of does two things. On one level, it does this very pat, very predictable, fun, swashbuckling adventure. Mm. Errol Morris 101. Flynn. Entry point, you know. Errol Morris? Errol Flynn, excuse me. Yeah, yeah. Errol Morris. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, you know. There's, there's a Miller High Life commercial every three or four minutes through the movie. And then a cop is uh, proven to be uh, a bad guy. Great. It's great stuff. Um, no, it's like Errol Flynn 101. It's like, you know. I love all the all the yeah. swashbuckling is great. All the fights are great. Verbinski has an incredible eye for detail. We're working stuff into these fight scenes that's really fun. There's always little moments throughout it that I think punctuate it. And then we talk a lot about how a lot of CGI combat kind of can reduce things to like a, a shitty soup where you're like, this just looks right. awful. And in this movie, while it certainly looks like a movie made in the early thousands, it, it I think every fight scene, particularly the end sequence, actually, I love that end fight of the guys, the, of the zombie guys going out of the moonlight and, the, and there's like eight different threads to follow. And actually, it's pretty impressive. It holds up. I We haven't really got into whether we liked it or not. I think ultimately, I, I think it's a good movie. Right, it's well, very long. By the end, I'm sort of losing interest. But what it does, it does very well. And yeah, the, the, I, I like CGI is boring to me. But this had enough. Like the scene where the moonlight's in that little pool, and Depp and Rush are just fighting around in a circle, and they keep turning into a skeleton. It's like it, it's it's subtle enough that it's like it's in your face, but it's just a part of it. Everything works. Okay, so uh, that's the one side. The other side I wanted to get to. I totally agree with you. It's a fun movie. It's fun to watch. It is like two and a half hours long and that it, it's, I don't know. It left me not like, you know, I guess we'll save this for a little bit. I, I'm not like dying to watch like eight more of these or whatever, but like, you know, it was fun. I'm not. The flip side of this is that the lore already is quite dense. What do you mean by that? Because I want to ask you, when I, met, I mentioned very early on in the podcast, we got sidetracked. I was, grew up with uh, meager financial means unlike you so i never went to oh, make it about class huh? i never went to a disney world i right. never went to a disneyland well my parents did things that society valued right, right and right. the way that our society worked is that if you're if you do things of value and dare I say a virtue you're enumerate you know you're you're you're, you're given money mm-hmm. which is the ultimate arbiter of value that's true that reflects the value you post to society now yeah, your, yeah. your my mom my dad french father no french mother oh my god pick a side i'm on the side of freedom wow much like the back black pearl represents wow yeah my wow. mom's a, uh, a lowly almost servant public school teacher <laughs> Yeah, I'll clean that up. I'm the little piss boy. Scrub it up, piss boy. Um, give me my shilling. Ding. Thank you. Uh, and my dad was fired and never got his job back because they had crippling mental health problems. So, yeah, you know. Not a lot of fond memories around the old hobby household. <laughs> you know, for vacations, we would go to Shaw's in a town we've never been to. I mean, that's pretty fun. Shaw's are nice. Not really. You go out back in a crust of, of, of old bread from uh, the dumpster. Yeah, that's where I learned my piss it's boy mentality. It, yeah. yeah. But anyway, I, I never had the luxury of being, you know, uh, of providing value to the world like you and your parents did. And I never went. But you said that you went to Pirates of the Caribbean the ride. Well, okay. 
The, and you made like a, you at a point in the movie, you're like, I saw that in real life. There was a, v- a VHS video of like a tour of Disneyland that I watched a lot as a kid. I eventually went to the actual thing, but as a kid, <laughs> I'd watch the tape. You don't have to belittle your value to this country. No, thank you. You earned important. your trip to Disneyland. Okay, so okay. Or did you go to Disney World or Disneyland? I uh, I honestly can't remember. I was a child. Which one is which? Both Florida and California were sunnier than Massachusetts, so I had no idea which one. Wait, it was. you honestly don't know whether you're in Florida or California? I want to say Florida did the big one, and I think it's Disneyland. It seems like Disney you were World. a Florida boy. Oh, fuck you. What do you mean, fuck me? No, this, this one's in Disneyland. So this is, I think I've been to both. I don't know. Oh, God. You now you're coming parents. out as being to both? To both? What the fuck, man? I thought okay. you were only into one. Pirates of the Caribbean is a dark ride attraction at Disneyland, Magic Kingdom, what does that Tokyo mean? Disneyland, and Disneyland Park in Paris. You'll never go. It doesn't matter to you. It doesn't matter. What's a dark land attraction? Dark ride attraction. Like you go into a dark tunnel. And you oh, see shit. okay. okay yeah, it yeah. leads you through a diorama, like a big adult diorama. Yeah, I went to one of those. It was at like a just a pop up, you know, fun park. It's called like Scary, Scary Town. It's really bad. But nice. That, that was the only one I went to. Well, I'm looking forward to Scary Town, your your indie horror. No, it was called House. It was literally called. I remember this. Now. It was called House of Mirth. That's fucked up. Isn't that weird? The original version of Disneyland, which opened in 1967, was the last attraction whose construction was overseen by Walt Disney. He died three months before it opened, and they say his ghost haunts it to this very day. That's awesome. Yeah, I made that up. Um, so you, the, the ride. I can't tell when you're reading off your phone what's real or not. Isn't that a reflection on the society we live in where deception is the name of the game because of Drumpf, President Cheeto? Uh, okay. The ride, which tells the story of a band of pirates and their troubles and exploits. Okay. So that's what's basically going on there. We're seeing their their, their, their exploits and such. And I'm saying in the movie, they reproduce. So what do you do? Let's get off your phone. The ride begins get amid off, glimmering let's fireflies get off during an can evening you, in a Louisiana bayou. Can you stop talking like that? And can you just tell me a memory that you have? Well, I mean, again, is it, everything it just trapped very, in your little phone? Okay, you do your, your uh, Andy Rooney five minutes on millennials and their phones. What the fuck, man? We're doing a fucking podcast. I'm telling people about the fucking attraction. Yeah, remember it. Remember, <laughs> I have done so many drugs between that trip and that VHS tape to now. I can barely recall. <laughs> I hope that I you... remember the pirates in the cage in, in the yeah, prison the trying to get the dog. I remember as a kid, like that imprisonment always scared me because <laughs> I think my dad read me the cast of Amontillado and the Telltale mm. Heart and all these like Poe stories about like. You're fucked up, you're trapped forever, and you're going to die, like, buried alive. Like, that really scared me. Did he ever threaten you with such... Oh, constantly. Yeah, he's like... Fred's a monster. You've met him. Yeah, he's like, Josh, if you're not good, cask it. You're going to cask you. We're going to cask you. I'm going to lure you into a French basement (laughs) with with a fine wine. (laughs) By the way, this movie, someone says, try the wine, just like in uh, Clockwork Orange. I poked you and told you that. Yeah, you did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Remember Clockwork Orange? So you remember that? that? Yeah. Okay, I remember the dog with the key. I remember the people in the jail. I remember That's the, the, the body busty lady pouring the wine on the drunken so man. So what do you do? You just walk around? Like I've It's never... a fucking ride, you <laughs> idiot. I've never been I'm trying on... to fucking describe it. It's bad. Well, you're Tell me. To... Just... You sit in the fucking thing. It goes around in the dark. And you see pirates doing shit. That's it. You don't do anything else. It's a ride. Well, I don't get it. It's not much to get. What is the point? It's fun to see cool shit in the dark. So you see actors pretending to be pirates? No! They're dioramas! <laughs> Wait, are they are they animatronics? The boats glide, glide gently past a violent thunderstorm, tossing an old pirate ship about. Though the ship's pilot is nothing more than a skeleton. Whoa. Yeah. Uh, no, g- g- yes, that's it. They're just fucking robots who do robot shit, and you watch them do shit. It was the 60s, bro. We were in Vietnam. We needed anything to get through this. I'm so glad I was poor. Yeah, it's it's the character you've gleaned from that experience. It's like me being as fabulously wealthy as I am. I don't understand Mm -hmm. what it's like to sweat for a day's labor. Right. For me, if I'm not given my filet mignon every night at 7 p.m. on the nickel. On the nickel? On the dime. I will savagely beat one of our manservants. Yeah. I'm hoping one day to become one of your piss boys. Well, honestly, your resume is I know, that's really what I was going to say. You scrubbed a I, lot of I bits. do yeah. one more year yeah. at my current job, I'm going to put in the application, baby. Yeah, you put it on parchment, seal it with wax, put it on an owl, send yeah. it down to the woods. Go to, I was just going to go to beapissboy.com. Beapissboy.com? We got to buy that now. Beapissboy.com. Right. I, I can't buy that. Okay. Yeah. We don't have a lot of money. I'm, we're broke. We're doing, yeah, I would say we have negative money. This, absolutely. Yeah. Do you know how much money it costs just to come out here? What, from Boston? Yeah. Fill up a tank? I don't know, 20 bucks? 25? Uh, 30 plus tolls. 30? 
Yeah, dude. It's what? It's Your not... Ford Fiesta, how many gallons does that thing have? Uh, 11 and a half. 12. Call I got 12 13. Gallons. Fuck you. What the fuck? See, fuck this is what you. I'm talking about. This class warfare. I know. I and I will have... win. I can only afford it. We're going gallon. to win. Hey, fellow rich people, shout it out. We're going to beat the poor people. Going to beat the poor people. Okay, anyway, so right. Um, what I'm trying to say is that I have a uh, I going into this movie, I was like, oh yeah, that thing I saw as a kid. Like I right. definitely was going to was like I remember that being fun it, it, even at 13 when I was very wise. I remember being like mm. this is it's a little weird cuz like it's not like a a narrative. You see scenes, so to speak. In this movie? Oh, no, 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 in the in ride. In the ride. So yeah. I'm saying like the, the, right. the, the thing jump I do not they made here is dramatic. Yes. Absolutely. Right. So I'm, I want to look at, uh, we're going to learn something about how this happened. Okay. On your on your phone. Well, this is the research we're doing. Okay. We're not doing research before anymore. That's what the RE means. It means you searched before. Originally, Johnny Depp wanted Jack Sparrow to have no nose and be afraid of silly things like pepper and the common cold. That's cool. Disney rejected the idea. <laughs> what does that mean? Wait. He was going to get rid of his nose. Yeah, no nose. For the entire length of the film. He would have no nose. And then be scared of Pepper getting into his nose holes? I, I mean, I presume so. I, I mean, like. Yeah. And now, the whole Black Pepper thing. Now, Black Pepper will make me sneeze sometimes, but I think movies have really gone to town with Pepper. Right. You know? Well, not anymore. That used to be a thing. Lay off. Lay off me? Let's just, I'm saying Hollywood. Or lay off Pepper. Okay. The Pepper industry. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The yeah. Pepper. You know, think this is Big Pepper? Big pepper, I'm not a big pepper. Mm. That was very good. Put it up the nose and make you sneeze and be funny. Yeah. Um, okay, so moving past all that, what I'm trying to say is that... Why would we ever do that? More, more pepper. You want the podcast to actually pepper, go somewhere? Pepper, pepper, um, So I, occasionally I've been to restaurants where they'll, they'll grind the pepper for you. I've been to that once as it's well. It's fun. It's very fun. Have you ever fucked with the waiter and be like, I'll take some more? And then just keep doing that until you're just got so much pepper on your plate. No, I'm, I'm, I'm a real just person. to fuck with the waiter. No, I've never done that. Yeah, I do. Yeah, never done that. Give that look in your eye like you might do it though. <laughs> More pepper, please. More pepper. Big pepper. 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 There's a rapper named Pepper Boy from the South who I like a Pep- lot. Is it Pepper Boy or Peppa Boy? It's like Pepper Boy. It's like Pepper Boy. Pepper Boy. Pepper Boy. Pepper Boy. I like that. That's Peppa good. Pepper Pepper Boy. Pepper Boy. Pepper Better than piss he boy. Talking about climate change, my gangs were bad. What? Was kind of like he was like kind of woke in his own way. He was saying gangs were the cause of no, no, climate like, change. Yes, 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 yes. No, he said <laughs> gangs are bad, and also we need to worry about climate change. That's Two separate cool. issues. Yeah. Two separate issues, but both. He's like, important. I used to be. I used to do crimes. Now I don't. Don't do crimes. But crimes. I do crimes because I'm a part of global climate problems. Well, I mean, if you're using plastics right now, anyone out there listening, you're a fucking criminal, and I'd be burning hell. Are you eating meat? I hope you get the curse of Tortuga. Which is? I guess you turn to a skeleton and you can't eat anything? It seemed pretty cool. The curse is really bad. I'm going to go a little curse talk. Okay, let's get into curse talk. Could we just set this up marginally? Okay, so. In the, in the beginning, baby Elizabeth Swan, a.k.a. Kira Knightley, a.k.a. Natalie Portman, a.k.a. a thin white woman, finds a, a young Orlando Bloom, a.k.a. any thin white man. Doesn't matter. Both those characters are pretty interchangeable. Anyone can play either of those Right, roles. there was a scene where I asked you, like, do you think they just made him grow a beard so that during close-ups we yeah. could tell them apart? They're both very they, bird-like and elfin. Yeah, right. elf, like elf birds. birds. They're both yeah. like a pair of elf birds. Yeah. Yeah. I think the smartest thing Johnny Depp did, and famously he had a lot of control over the character and was like... Except for his nose. Except the nose thing, which they scuttled. <laughs> he was like, he basically was like, like, how about you play like a pirate? He's like, what if I play like fucking Keith Richards on goddamn heroin and I'm a fucking freak? And they're like, uh, okay. And it, it does sort of save the movie because like I do get that without that linchpin performance, um, Bloom and, and Knightley are mm-hmm. fine. And I, I think I like Natalie's performance, but like, again, it's not like a searing iconoclastic Wait, did thing. you just say Natalie? You did. I got you. I don't you. know anymore. I got you. Me. Yes. This is fucking yes. violent. Yes. I got it. Peppa boy. Um, so basically, he has you know a medallion. You know who wouldn't have been fooled by that? EAK hyphen one. EAK hyphen one. He's calling him by the right names. When I make a robot in the future, it'll be named EAK hyphen one. He will <laughs> wax rhapsodic about Johnny Depp in this fucking movie. <laughs> <laughs> Depp precedent. You know, just I know we're, we're derailing whatever you were talking about a minute ago. If you think about this movie coming out in 2003, like, in the midst of like the prequels, uh, the Star Wars prequels, and people being like, "What the? F- what is happening with this fucking franchise?" Like maybe like an iconic moment, right. and then the Matrix sequels, where people are like, "Yeah." Regardless of their quality, two massive franchises where people are like, "What the fuck is happening?" Right. And then this comes along, and it's like, "You like pirates? You like boat shit? Come on, get in the boat. Get in the boat." What about Lord of the Rings? Lauder. 
Yeah, that was what was what years were those? This two thousand one, two thousand roughly analogous. Yeah, yeah. So those these were series that were like getting people on board with series again. I mean, I think we're we're generalizing because series are constantly being produced. But I see what you're saying. I think this this was a real if an we're talking, easy buy-in. We had uh, both the Matrix sequels and Star Wars were using CGI very badly. Yes. And this, and then suddenly Lord of the Rings. And this, I think, we're using CGI really well. Right. I think this is sort of like ushering us into accepting CGI rather than being really appalled by it. Yeah, because in this, they really lean very heavily on it. And while there's some things I don't love about it, Verbinski is a visual director. He, We talked about this, and this is, like I think, a pretty standard observation. He really likes colors. And sometimes that's really cool. Everything's mm-hmm. like nice and saturated and rich and really fun to look at. Other times we enter blue zone and green zone and it's kind of like a, a bit much on the eyes. And his moonlight aesthetics I find a little boring at a certain point. Mm-hmm. I think to cover up the harder things for the CGI to do, it's easy to just wash them out in that like yeah. cool. It's smart though. It's smart. Because that's what like the Matrix and Star Wars movies didn't do that. And it was like, wow, this just looks like shit. So if you're aware that things aren't looking quite right, you can do something about it. Yeah, I mean, I think he, did, he, did, he, he took the high ground, so to speak, where if the entire scene is bathed in a strange light, all of a sudden the CGI can... Yeah, it's smart. Yeah, 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 it's smart. Okay, so Lord of the Rings, I, this is insane. They went out 2001, 2002, 2003. That's crazy. That's crazy. Wow, they, they're efficient down there. Yeah, an old Kiwi town. And by Kiwi down town. there, I mean... Ki- I don't mean Kiwi town. What do you mean? What Hollywood town? No, it's in New Zealand. That's kiwi. No one calls it that. They call them kiwis. Yeah, no, no one likes it. Do, they, do you think the kiwis like it? Yeah. I mean, I think they embrace it. They probably love it. I mean, fucking kiwis. I was going to talk about the the curse. Um. Okay. Get, let's get into the curse. No. Okay. You were what, what I was set trying to say was that essentially yeah. she finds young Will Turner. Yeah. Played you, by young Will Turner. You were trying to say. Yeah. You shut the did fuck up. Shut the fuck it. up. Please stop talking. Um. And he has a medallion. She steals the medallion. The Barbosa. She drops the medallion in water. This is very thinks. bad. Just shut the fuck up. Can you please do this right? I'm doing it right. You're just mumbling. I'm not mumbling. All right. Go. She grows up. She kept the medallion. Uh, she's getting hit on by the same like officer who like knew her as a child, which is yeah, like really? Jesus. I mean, and by the way, the, the, this the show like the, the show the movie's first like twenty minutes. It's very crisp. It's very fun. Like they do a really good job getting us all set up. Mm-hmm. Um, he's like, yo, I'm a fucking commodore now. Maybe we can get to kissing. And her dad, the great Jonathan Price, is like, maybe you could get to kissing the commodore. And Natalie Portman is like, I'm wearing the corset. It's so tight. I can't breathe. And she collapses and falls into the water. You said Natalie again. Oh, no one will know. It's probably Keira Knightley, but who's to say? All right. She falls into the water. This is like the the first of like seven times people fall off that one spot. Yeah, it's, it's kind great. of funny. Um, but her, when the medallion hits the water, a shockwave ripples out to the ocean. And you better believe that means Jeffy Jeff Rush and the Skeleton Boys are they're coming to town. Yeah. So they come to town, they raid everything, they steal everything. Um, there's a Which lot of great. death, there's a lot of violence. Great scene. Yeah. It's really shocking and fun. I love the cannon fire, it's well done. But basically they get Natalie on the boat. Kira. And I think it's a Natalie. Yeah. And they get her on the boat, uh, and they start to unfold the curse of the Black Pearl. Which, we will come to know, is quite complicated. And has several beats. And But not. And I think it's that's sort of complicated. my big weirdness with it. Okay, in your own words. So anyway, the curse tell is... Tell me the full story. So the curse is, if you take but one medallion, you are cursed. You, you just skipped over... That was a terrible job. Where what? does the medallion come from? I don't care. It Who comes from... It's shit? Aztec gold. Who cares? Sp- that's the whole movie! No, it's not. Yes! The whole movie is about the, the learning something about, about, about freedom. Yes. All of us. No, sh- you're, this is terrible, I'm bro. just saying... I'm talking about the curse. You, but you skipped over what the curse All right, is. get us there. Okay, I will. And you will do it. Okay, so... God damn it. Shut the fuck up. You can't just yell at me. I'm, I'm yes, a piss boy. Piss boy? I'm a piss boy. I've got I will rights. give you something to piss on. All right. Okay. That's what I want. I know. Wait, piss on? Shh. So, Wait. Johnny Depp used to be Captain the Black Pearl. He's like, on the island of Ilsa de la Muerte, island of death, there's a famous treasure, which is this Aztec gold in a stone box. And we're going to go there and get all this yum, yum, yum gold. 
And what happens is old Jeff Rush, a.k.a. Barbarossa, he's like, what if we mutiny this guy? And they kick him off Thorn Island. He somehow magically escapes. There's a lot of lore around how he escapes. It mm-hmm. turns out kind of boring. He just got a ride. No big deal. Drank a lot of rum. It was crazy. Anyways, they go to the island, steal the gold. And like, we got the gold. Look at us. But as they spend all the gold, they realize the curse is that now they can't eat food. They can't drink water. And they can't fuck. Come. And he's like. He's like, we haven't enjoyed the pleasure of a woman's flesh. Or our lust was unsated. I'm like, yeah. you're just edging forever. You're yeah, he's an edging. edgelord. Imagine the load he'll dump the second. He... <laughs> Can you believe that? I hope that's in the sequel. <laughs> I hope we see one of the skeleton pirates come. God, that would answer so many questions about this movie. I mean, it would just confirm what we already know. That pirates are down to fuck. Um, and they're full of cum. By the way, it, it, long-time listeners will note, uh, our last episode featured a lot of horniness. This movie is very chaste. Oh, Despite yeah. all the violence, it's very chaste. There's like maybe one kiss in it. Mm-hmm. It's very, like, despite a lot of what are seem like obviously prostitutes in Tortuga, it, yeah. it's a pretty not sexualized movie no. which is it's a it's fine it's, it's good. still it's kind of crazy movie. for pg-13 it's very racy they do insinuate things about sex there's a lot of killing mm-hmm. anyways so that's the curse they have to reassemble all the all the gold coins into this chest the last one requires the blood of, of william turner the son of bootstrap bill why is that do they explain why it's a curse thing. so you need a, you need blood for every single person who no, no, took no. it for whatever reason no no because that's why depp cuts his hand when he returns it no, that was a that was a that was a lie. That was to confuse them. No, you got confused. Oh, so whoever is the last piece that required to accompany their blood. So Bootstrap yes. Bill gave his son. Okay, that makes more sense. So basically, this is complicated. It is complicated. We're one movie in, and this is an elaborate curse. It's elaborate, but it's also easily manipulated because basically, all if you like, you need to do a raid. Say, all you do is you take all the, the money out, just keep them in your little pock pock. Go do a raid as an immortal skeleton guy. You feel that hunger maybe for a few hours, and then you just all go back and you throw all the stuff back in. Well, they haven't gotten to that point where they can plan around this. But I'm now. just saying, like, yeah, yeah now no, that's cool. But like, they now that they know, it's like the curse shouldn't let you live. The curse, when it's set free, like you should die because otherwise, then you could just become immortal pirate guys that can just kill whoever they want. I see what you're saying. It's just like I know you hate this, but like this is where my mind was like, wow, this is like. What if it was a different movie? Like, if they just set this up differently, I wouldn't be so distracted by how lame this curse is. But well, it's I mean, the, the title of the movie. It's just like... It's yeah, it's not, a lot. It was there. It did the job of getting me to the end of the story. But ultimately, I'm just like... It's so easy. You just take one thing out. Now you're cursed. And yeah, now you can go do whatever the fuck you want. Then you just yeah. return it. Now you're not cursed. It's like... It seems like that you could just like wish for as many wishes as you want, genie. Well, it sounds like you're saying there's potential for this story to get even crazier. Well, that's crazier. true. Because one thing I would like to admit is that I've only seen this first movie. I have not seen any of the other ones. Okay. So this could be the main plot point of number two. Now, I saw number two, but I saw number two under the pretense of making out with my Jewish summer camp girlfriend in the back of the theater. Didn't you say that one, someone got a hand job during one of these? No, I said my friend received oral sex while watching The Matrix Revolution. Oh, that's right. Which is... Not a horny movie. No. Matrix Reloaded is horny. Which one's which? Reloaded is two. Yeah. And two is horny because the Merovingian makes that lady come with digital science. <laughs> and, and the they go to the rave scene. in Zion. Yeah. A lot of wet. A lot of wet gyrating. Yeah. Um, Matrix Revolutions. A lot of Christ analogies. Not very horny. Do you think maybe this friend of yours was just riding the horniness from the second one? I mean, weren't we all excited by all the tight... Like- latex outfits and mm-hmm. stuff and yeah the, i was you know they came out six months apart that's crazy yeah what was going on in the early thousands marvel's Who like knows? hey you like thor cool in two years we'll get another one I, right i like that yeah. everyone's like we're, we're deluged by marvel movies but i'm like they're doing it in such a manner that it's not like it's we're gonna what, crank out the same years? story yeah it's nuts well it's been 10 years it's only been 10 years in marvel yeah that was the whole thing when did was it 08 08 mark was uh yeah iron man iron man Directed by John Favreau. Yeah, who did The Lion King. Lion King, the circle of that. <laughs> can you, after this, can you hold me up like the little baby? I probably could. Yeah, I would love that. I've been doing some curls. Yeah, I saw you. Your arms look great. Thank you. Yeah. Look at those muscles. Wow. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh my yeah. God. Oh, my God. Look at, this is good. Yeah, yours pop more. Congratulations. Wow. Pop. 
You have no body fat though, so I'm overcoming yeah. a lot of stuff. I know you look great. Think that th- it's very kind of you to say. You know, we could beat up. Good. We could beat up pirates. I think we could, especially these pirates, um, who are both very threatening and very silly at the same time. Right. I do like again the stakes of this movie from the beginning. There's like hanging corpses rotting in the sun, people getting stabbed, and they balance that tone well where it's like silly but also dire, which I would say for establishing a tone for a series is brilliant. Mm. Where like it's going to be fun but also dangerous, and I think that's really hard for things to do. It is. I think a lot of series like either feel too facile and ridiculous or like needlessly bleak, and this sort of like sits between a like Game of Thrones and like a early Harry Potter kind of. That's true, and great off the cuff references. I think yeah. those are both spot on. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, now let's get into it. If what, are you Hufflepuff or Ravenclaw? You know. Ravenclaw. I don't know. I don't know. I think you are. I think, uh, yeah, I think I'm Rave. You're Ravenclaw. I'm a Raver. You're not evil enough to be Slytherin, and you are a coward, so you're not Gryffindor. Yeah. Hufflepuff seems like, you know, you know, like, I don't want to... Yeah, it's Please, a, I'm already seem... a piss boy. I cannot be a huffle. huffle. Yeah, no, that's too much. Too but much. We even call those like annoying nerds. And I think you know. Yeah, that's bing. Perfect. That's a bingo. That's a bingo. That's what uh you know old Christy Christ, Christ Waltz says that in Inglorious Bastards. Oh yeah, you've been on a real tea kick. Well, let me tell you, there's this guy Quentin Tarantino, and he makes these movies that are very very violent. Very violent. Yeah. What if you did a Pirates? I'd love that. Yeah, I mean, he definitely knows how to make a two-hour, 45-minute movie. Sure. <laughs> so he, he's right in there. This is, this is a long movie. Yeah. I definitely found myself dipping in and out of it. But that being said, okay, we're getting towards the back part of the, the podcast here. Let's go back to the classic archetypal question, the titular question of this endeavor. Which is? When will it end? Are you at a point right now where you're like, you know what? I saw one. It's not bad. And I don't really want to. Or are you like, give me two. Give me a taste of that. So I'm unfortunately I'm ready to tap out which really? sucks because yeah. I know there's what five more of these things and they're all over two and a half hours they're very long but and that really isn't a part of it I'm not if it knew how to use the time but we like there's like five minutes left and we both just like randomly got up and I put eczema cream on you went and I don't even know what you were doing I jacked off yeah you jacked off yeah. on the kitchen table as you do yeah and we're just like the it's movie, a Jewish thing the movie was running there was still scenes left and we were just like, all right, I've had enough of this. And like, yeah, yeah. And um, there's an after credit, which was cute. I made sure to stay for that. You was it the it? first one? I doubt it was the first one, but I think we're getting to that era where like people are expecting more and more. I remember I saw one of them that ends with like a really dramatic reveal of like, well, I won't ruin it for you, but like there's like a very dramatic character reveal in, in this one, series, in this series at oh. some point, they, they, they get into that shit. Um, the thing about this is that you're right. I, I am already a little fatigued. Yeah, well, because for me, Orlando Bloom and Natalie Portman are really not interesting. I, I think it's Kira Knightley. I, I, you said I Natalie said Portman. That. I did not. I think you did. Okay. But did yeah. not. Yeah. Uh, I am bored by them, so I really have no interest in their lives. And Johnny Depp's doing good, but I really don't care enough to sit through. Point of clarification. In 2003, it yeah. seemed like Johnny Depp was doing well. Continue. What you... He's not doing well now. Yeah, 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 he's living to die. But back then, oh yeah, so he, yeah, he looks well. like he's maybe he really got cursed. Wow. Do you think he maybe? You think old Depp? The thing that explains the spousal abuse and addiction is that he and, can't come. Is that he can't come? Wow. He can't eat. Wow. Can't drink. Can't ashes, drink man. rum. Well, he drinks wine apparently like every day. Like yeah, but do you think wine. he just spends fifteen grand on a bottle of wine to just have it turn into ash? I love it when Bar- Barbarossa drinks the the rum and just splashes through his fucking open Ribs, corpse. Yeah, it's so sick. I did like the way they played. They were it was a very playful movie. Yeah, and I enjoyed the hijinks. I enjoyed, but what this is different than an Errol Flynn movie. Those were like fucking four reels, five reels. It was like an hour. Yeah, they're like really tight. At the most. It was like, right. yeah, there's only so much I want to watch people swing around. Bend, oh, no, here's the thing. Smash steel. Uh, that part I actually like. Right. What I'm concerned about, here's my fear going into this. I remember the second one from what I remember it from not locking lips with my then bow was that there's a lot of plot and mythos and a lot of like world building. Yeah. And as I remember, I believe this series really triples down on the world building. Which is funny because, like, I think frequently people like deride sequels for not having a rich, like, they're not being. Mm-hmm. I think this gets really into the pirate lore. Well, we did tease this last episode, and this is sort of what I wanted to talk about. Was like back in the eighties, I was talking about like how financial support 
really dropped after the second film. And I was like, it's cash trap. We will spend as little money on this as possible to make the most. They're, I think the fifth one of these has like a fucking half a billion dollar budget or something insane. And it's, These movies have made a, a fucking trash load of money. They make a lot of money, but it's not like uh, early franchises where they're like, all right, we've made enough to get people interested in the franchise. We'll present them with two or three more that suck just to make the cash grab on them being interested. They are like fucking throwing it all in. No, they invested hard on this. Yeah. They um, had to take like a pay cut for the last one because people stopped. But that's the thing is it's fake interest. They are basically manipulating the world by throwing all this money into it when people don't give a shit about Pirates of the Caribbean. I don't know. I think you're wrong. I think this, they, they would still make a fuck ton of money. They made billions of dollars. Right, because if you throw posters up on a subway like all across the world, people will go see it. They're throwing millions of dollars into this thing just to get people to see this movie that I think people stopped caring about in like 2008. Well, I mean, we're, but again, we're talking about like, this has persisted for a long time. Who's in it? That's I like, I don't well, even want to look it up. Together. Yeah, we're going to so find like, out. Whether or not we want to, we, we have a great deal of movies left to watch here. So now let's turn to the IMDb <laughs> trivia corner and I'll just throw out some little tidbits for you. Okay. One of the film's <laughs> last lines Bring me that horizon. Was conceived by Johnny Depp on the morning the scene was filmed. That was my favorite line. Bring me that horizon. That is the last line, not one of the last lines. This is something else. He says, that. bring me the last... You read it in your EAK1. Okay, hold on. This is huge. This is huge. All right. The title was originally just Pirates of the Caribbean, but the name was changed in the hope that it would do well at the box office and a sequel could be made. Oh, really? Really. Oh, so you, you uh, can say that I was uh, correct. Yeah, I mean, it's funny that they were, like, concerned even for a heartbeat that this would not kick off. Because, again, they, they dumped money into this. Disney? What were they doing in the 90s? In the 90s? Uh, some weirder movies. Were they still doing animated stuff, of mostly? Of course, yeah. yeah. But it's, I'm like, it's like mostly? like Disney 90s. I mean, Emperor's New Groove. Yeah, I'm just saying, like, th- was this their first foray into franchising? I mean, they didn't do that. Okay, so popular Disney movies from... I mean, we have... Beauty and the Beast, Lion King, Hercules, Mulan, <laughs> Pocahontas. Yeah, they did some stuff in the 90s. So I was saying, Aladdin, like, those were all Tarzan. one-off in their well, style of 2D animation. But, but there were directors, direct to home market sequels right. to many of them. That's how those things worked. Right. Is this their first venture into big screen franchising? I honestly, I can't answer that definitively, but it feels like they're it really feels putting like a stake this in the is it. Yeah. This is like how Disney got more even more money to buy star wars to buy like to take over the world was maybe through pirates of the caribbean money i mean yeah i buy that yeah I mean, this seems like the, the 21st century where they're staking I feel it like this is the downfall of cinema of cinema yeah. is pirates of the caribbean this is what funded this was the war chest that disney used to acquire more than half of production companies the Pirates of the Caribbean franchise is the 10th highest grossing franchise ever, which is crazy when you think about how that is since 2003. Yeah. Like, it, 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 it like already has been surpassed dramatically by some other franchises, which is kind of wild. That's true. Yeah. But anyway, you weren't listening to me, so whatever. I was listening to you. There's a hidden Mickey in it. There we go. Cool. Can say your fucking thing again? That's all right. I probably heard it already. Just listen to the episode. I don't. Just listen to the episode. I refuse. I patently refuse. What was this thing about Mickey? I was going to listen to it before, but now you're doing this thing and I'm not going to. Really? Be happy, proud of really? yourself. No, I'm never proud of myself. I put on you the Curse of the Black podcast episode and I immediately regret all of the phrasing that so we So how do I break it? Um, Can you at least tell me how to break it? How to break it. You got to take a little coin. Okay. Cut your hand. Oh, so it's very... Rub the coin in the wound Ooh, for a that's, while. That's about how long? A, take a, uh, five, ten minutes. Uh, <laughs> This sounds bad. Drop it in the urinal in the, in the office bathroom. Over there. Use over there. Okay. Flush, 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 flush. Till it goes away? No. Fish okay, it back good. out. Oh. Stick your hand in. Can I use Swallow it. And then the curse shall be lifted. No, that's not too bad. You didn't even ask what the curse Especially does. Just for a little piss boy. You went straight to the... You didn't even... You know. Well, that's true. What, do, what can I ask now or is it too late? It makes... It gives you that little pee pain where you're like, is this serious? I don't know. But then you sort of forget about it. But then every time you pee, you're like, I don't know. Is this like a thing? I'm going to get rid of that prano. I hate that. And it's a horrible Actually, thing. Actually, I don't know if I've ever had it. Yeah, maybe once like or twice. once in a while you're like, what the... Is that bad? Yeah. <laughs> the body's lot. amazing because you're like, is, should this be happening? I really don't know. I hate my body uh, right your now. Body's, why? It's just covered in eczema that sucks it does suck i've been yeah. living with this for like over a month now it in keeps... the moonlight you do actually look a lot like 
one of the, the undead one pirates. Yeah, that's yeah. very nice. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, uh, because of the eczema. Like I used to have it in the in like the the, the joints, right? The inside joints. What are those called in medicine? Well, in popular lore, the inside of your elbow is called your weenus. No, so that's the, that's the outside. Fuck. Yeah. Shit. What's the inside? I don't in, know. I mean, in tattoo culture, it's called the ditch. Behind the knee? I've heard that. Behind the knee. Behind the elbow. Behind the elbow. What are we hiding back there? Mm. Mm. Eczema. <laughs> pearls. <laughs> Gross. Black pearls. Mm. Uh, okay, so. Yeah. And then I also got a sunburn, which mixed with my eczema, which mixed with my allergies. It looks like someone shook out a bunch I'm of Parmesan. Fucking on. falling apart. <laughs> I hate okay. my body. In the Can 90s, I tell you a sad story? Yeah, why not? Hey, it's the end of a podcast. Why not throw in a sad personal story? When I was after... It's really... It's because I watched the Disney movie Aladdin. Okay. And I learned about genies. I think I'd known about genies because I used to be read Aladdin when I was a boy. For me, it was Kazam, but go ahead. Okay. Yeah. Um, wait, when was that? The Shaquille O'Neal movie, 1996? Yeah. Kazam. Okay. Uh I, in earnest, used to be like, I wish I could find a lamp with a genie so I could wish for real skin. Well, I mean, me too. I have the skin condition. What is it? I got like bumpy skin. You got bumpy skin? I don't really care about it. It doesn't fuck up my life in any way. Does it hurt? No, not really. Yeah, see, you're lucky. What are we talking about your bumpy skin for? I'm saying when I was a kid, I, I would dream that I could make a, the perfect body. You oh. know? I've had wow. I've had body, I've, I've had struggled with my weight. I've struggled with my perception of my body. I've like struggled with a lot of things in my life. And I've always been like, what if I could just get a wish I had the perfect body? But then I'm like, no, I know this shit works. I'll get the perfect body, but I'm like a fucking homicidal mm. pedophile or something. And they're like, yeah. well, you're the perfect body now, you murderous child rapist. And I'm wow. like, no, no, no that's why Jeannie, I don't. Genie, take it back. Genie, yeah, get back. But you know what this did teach me? <laughs> what did it teach you? I, I started this episode off sort of burning the, br- no, just, just building a wall, shall we, shall we say. Okay. Not burning a bridge. Building a wall like between friggin', us. Like friggin' Drumpf? Yeah, like friggin' Drumpf. Yeah. I was calling you a rich man, right. me a lowly piss boy. But, sure, Scrub, but, scrubbing those boards. Yeah. To me, I saw nothing, no parallel, nothing that was in common between us. Yet we both had the same dream, same dream of skin, nice skin without blemish, smooth, just smooth skin, soothing to the touch. We both would go to bed at night, scratching, thinking about genie, and providing us with the same goal. I'm a genie in a bottle. We we are the same. We are the same. Wow. It's like how at the end of Pirates of the Caribbean, Curse of the Black Pearl, mm-hmm. rules are just guidelines. Right. And, and the snobby, mean British naval guys and the scummy, devious pirates, they both set aside their codes to acknowledge that sometimes Jack's, old Captain Jack Sparrow's right. <laughs> and sometimes funny. you just got to shoot down the middle. Okay. We're wrapping up here. I want to get to one point I wanted to say here that right. I actually quite like a lot in this movie. Yeah. Um, given that he obviously is the, the the entire pillar of the franchise, Johnny Depp's performance as uh, Captain Jack Sparrow. Mm. Um, I like in the movie that everyone is obsessed with luck and fortune. Mm. And he is the one person who's like, no, being smart, being devious, making your opportunity. He undercuts everyone else's suppositions about existence in this movie. And I think it is clever and fun, and I like that very much. I That's get why point. he's lightning in a bottle. Everyone talks about how he has bad luck, and what we, they don't see is that he's making his own luck. Yeah, and that's cool is that, like, the scenes where he's trapped in jail, he... No, that's not true, though. He does get lucky in the not very end. really. The very end, when he's trying to figure out a way out of the second jail, that's when the... Too the, many jails. The door does get blasted off, and he gets to walk out. So even for Jack, luck does help him. Okay, sure. But, generally but I like speaking, that. I like that was a little yeah. moment where it's like, even Jack needs some luck every now and again. Right. I mean, everyone else, I think we talked about how like it's funny how frail and human everyone feels. Where like, despite this being like a massive, crazy Disney production, it is gritty enough where you're like, oh, I think that idiot Will Turner played Orlando Bloom might just die right now because he's like yeah. fucking dumb. I know he's not going to, but they really make it seem like he could die at any moment, which yeah. I love. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's a, I wish it were shorter. That's pretty, that's pretty much my only complaint. I just yeah. wish it were shorter because well, I'm just losing interest is not quite enough to keep me interested. But ultimately, you know, I'm going to take it back. I'm going to take it back. Whoa, this is unprecedented. Stop, I want, everyone, shut up. Even me? Uh, no, you go. Okay. Uh, I want another one. You want another one? I want 
Well, no. guess what, buddy? Another one. <gasps> we got another one coming. And the name, which is so unforgettable, a name that rolls off the tongue, get one that we phone. love. Get off the phone. It's a very good movie, and we phone. can't wait to see it. You know, it's so funny the way we think about things. No shit, wrong way. The way we think about life, the way we think about the things that we do. Do you want me to say something? This is produced by Jerry Bruckheimer. Yeah, okay. of course it was. It had the tree thing. Okay, so uh, we're going to see in the next film, Pirates of the Caribbean, Dead Man's Chest. And then Pirates of the Caribbean at World's End. And then Pirates of the Caribbean on Stranger Tides. And then Pirates of the Caribbean, Dead Men Tell No Tales. Is that it? That's all of them. It's just one, two, three, four. There's only five. Oh, we can do that. We can do it easy. You know, we're going to get so wet. This is a very wet movie. I would say for my benefit that people are soaked in this movie, which I think is great. Mm Hmm. Um, so yeah, there we go. Okay, so we've gotten through the Die Hard of the Seas. I think in record time, well, you know, this is a very long movie, and we're gonna have to like take a deep siesta between viewings to open ourselves back up to the world of Gore Verbinski. Yeah, I think what's gonna keep me going is E A K hyphen one. Yeah, does he have? I want to see like you do know, he has a cameo. Do you think there are versions of him for the other films that are as passionate? You know, who can find that? Little old me. Yeah. That's I'm right. Researcher. If uh, any of you are worried that Josh was not going to find something dumb to read on his phone during an episode, well. Hey, you're welcome, listener, for peppering my insight and research into the episode. Big pepper. Sorry for old Charles being a big old no-nose pirate man. Uh, no, you got a big old nose. Shut um, up. You do. It's very large. It's bulbous. I understand. Yeah. It's like zero to Burger Jack. We've already established that we wanted changes made to our lives <laughs> through body. Please okay. stop talking about it. Right. So, uh, end of episode. Uh, uh, we're going to... Uh, just last... Final final note. What I'm excited about yeah. is more exotic locales. I liked the exotic oh, locales. Yeah. This. I thought we saw islands. We saw different ports. It was a Tortuga, Ilsa de la Muerte. That's true. Rum I feel Island. like... I even like the main Port Royal or whatever. Yeah, this beautiful. is for a movie that is a series of locations. This nailed it. Shrek, take notes. I mean, you can't because you already happened. But yeah. if you haven't taken notes... After, anyway, you get it. Well, he that one didn't about, do such a great job. And he talked about EAK hyphen one. Talked right. about walking into a painting in sure. this review. And staying there. And staying there. Um it genuinely feels like that. Yeah. Every scene feels cool, feels real. Uh I sort of get distressed when cannonballs blow up when I I'm not even joking. Like when Port Real was getting bombed, I was like, Can you stop? I like this place. Yeah. I felt bad. So yeah, they're doing a good job with world building. I just, as you said, I hope they tone it down and don't overdo it, but we'll find out. We'll find out together on the next episode of When Will It End with Josh and Charles. Stay classy, pirates. Pirates.